Right, oh, tell you other champs, and yes, I have been buried in the bunker testing this MacBook Pro 13 to an inch of its life. And in this video, we're going to see how this performs for content creation, how it compares to the MacBook Pro 16, and all the latest and greatest Windows Powerhouse 15 inch laptops. Now, you might think that's strange that I'm comparing it to 15 inch laptops, but this is the thing, right? I want to know can this replace your 15 inch laptop? I'm going to test it with an eGPU as well, without an eGPU. Can Apple's latest Pro machine deliver? Now, in a couple of days, I'll be adding the Surface Book 3 to this comparison as well. So make sure you subscribe to see that. We've got a lot more content coming your way. So if you want to have a look at the specs of the 15-inch laptops, have a look at the screen there. You can see all the specs. Intel's latest, NVIDIA's latest, AMD's latest. This is what we do. Now, this MacBook Pro is the fourth Thunderbolt 3 model. So it's not the base model with the eighth generation CPUs. This one comes with the 10th generation i5. 16 gigabytes of RAM and the big deal about these 10th generation CPUs is really the Iris Plus graphics. We're going to get better graphics so this should help in content creation. Now you've got to temper your expectations here. This has four CPU cores and no graphics card and will barely use over 40 watts and I'm going to be comparing it to laptops with eight CPU cores, RTX graphics cards, Radeon graphics cards in the MacBook Pro 16 and they use double the amount of power and sometimes quadruple the amount of power. But it's all a trade-off, right? What you get with this is portability. But not only that, some think that not many people mention this. You don't just get the portability of the 13-inch, you get the battery life of a 13-inch when content creating. Because once you light up a GPU on a 15-inch laptop, and I'm just going to say 15-inch laptop, you know I'm including the 16-inch MacBook Pro in this. Once you light up the GPU in the 15-inch laptops, they will just drain battery so fast. Now, only the MacBook Pro 16 will perform on battery the same as it does off battery. This 13-inch MacBook Pro does as well. It performs just the same speed on battery as it does off. Now, the Windows laptops, you're going to get a nice haircut in the performance when you're on battery. So just think about that. Not only do you get the portability in a 13-inch laptop, you also get more or less around double the amount of battery life if you're like video editing or something like that because you don't have to light up a GPU. So that's something to consider too and that can be clutch when you're out there on the go. So anyway, let's get into the comparison. Here I have a Logic project and it's Billie Eyelashes or Eilish. It's her song, Ocean Eyes, actually made in Logic. It's a real world project. You can actually download this project from Logic. So that's amazing. You can actually go in there and see how they made the song. And it looks quite simple, but it's actually quite complex when you dig into it. And both these laptops handled this project no problems whatsoever. With all the effects they've put on, no drama handling this full song project. So then I bounced out an AIF and a 320 MP3. And on the MacBook Pro 16, it took 34 seconds. And it took 36 seconds on the MacBook Pro 13. Not much difference there. It's sort of like a single threaded thing bouncing that track out. But I'm quite amazed the MacBook Pro 13 is only two seconds behind the MacBook Pro 16. And that thing goes, you know, nearly to five gigahertz. So let's quickly have a look at Lightroom. And this is outputting 75 NEF raw files to JPEG export. Now this thing blew me away. This really blew me away. The 13 inch with the 10th generation CPUs. Wolf just smoked the Ryzen in the G14. Yes, that thing has eight cores. It has a RTX 2060 Max-Q. And the MacBook Pro 13 just smoked it there. And look how close it is to the other laptops, the MacBook Pro 16, Aero 15. It actually beats most of the six core 15 inch laptops as well. So why is this happening? This is 100% a CPU test. Doesn't use the GPU, doesn't use Intel HD. It's 100% CPU. How is it doing this? I think it's using AVX. Because if you don't know, the 10th generation Isolate CPUs come with AVX 512. Now AVX 512 used to only be in high end Xeons. You could only get it in workstation class products. Now you get it in the Ultrabook. And the Aero 15 MacBook Pro, they have AVX as well, but they only have 256, if I'm not mistaken there. So that's probably why the Aero and the MacBook Pro actually beat out the G14, even though this is a 100% CPU test, probably using the AVX there. And it just really surprised me. Four cores beat a G14 in a CPU test. And that's all down to probably that instruction. 
So if you have a look at the Photoshop score, 546, it's a good score for a quad core, I would say. It's only about 150 points behind like the lowest Photoshop score there, which is on the G14. And when you consider it doesn't have a graphics card, it has half the amount of cores, that's quite amazing. So really, this CPU really cranks up. It does have good performance. The Iris, of course, would help out. I did connect an eGPU, but it was actually slower with an eGPU. Now, I did try the After Effects benchmark, but it wouldn't work. From what I could see through the After Effects test, it looked like it was performing okay. It would get about 90% and crash in the test. I tested it with the eGPU and without it, you'll get a video memory error if it had no GPU. And when you had the GPU, it'd still error it anyway. It wouldn't be my first choice for After Effects, but let's get into video editing. Let's talk about timeline performance. So this is my sample project. I use every single laptop on 4K H.264 and let's see the scrubbing. Now this is with the color grading which is that clip there. I'll just turn it off on. So yeah, it's with it applied. So this is 4K content and the scrubbing, it's not too bad, but it's not butter like the 16 inch, right? If I was gonna say it's better than say the G14, maybe not quite as good as the Aero. Now that's what you'd expect, it doesn't have a GPU, it has four cores versus eight cores. So let's turn off that color grading and let's see the scrubbing now. And there you go, it's butter now. So 4K without the color grading, it can do no problems. Can it play it back? You can see there, green light, it's playing it back, 4K content, H.264, no problems. Add the color grading, let's see if it will play it back. Okay, dropping frames, but it's not quite that simple. If I get rid of that, obviously it'll play back without the color grading, but it actually can play back the color grading. It just doesn't like it when it's in an adjustment layer. So if I just add, say for example, whatever light, I'll just go to any stupid light. We'll just go to blacks, we'll add a bit of whites there, and then we'll add, oh, whatever, some saturation, just roll off. And as you can see there, scrubbing, still nice, butter smooth. And let's play it. And there you go, butter smooth. So if I get rid of this um, adjustment layer, it can play back with the color correction and everything. And the scrubbing is smooth. But once I go over adjustment layer with the color grading, that's where it'll slow down slightly a little bit there. So at the end of the day, it can play back 4K content, no problem, 4K H.264 this is, it can play back with the color correction, and that's quite amazing for a 13 inch laptop. And by the way, H.265, exactly the same thing. So it is amazing, and this is in Premiere, it's the same with DaVinci and Final Cut. So anyone that tells you that using Premiere for H.264, H.265 is no good with this machine for 4K content, doesn't know what they're talking about, okay? and you add the GPU and woof, it just goes. That being said, it's not gonna be the 15 incher. There's no chance. So if we have a look at this Blackmagic raw speed test with an eGPU, you can see here, 8K footage is not out of the realms of possibilities with DaVinci. 42 frames per second with the 8K metal with the eGPU and I used the 5700 XT. I was using a Radeon, but it was like slower. I don't know why. Just Yeah, I just put the 5700 in and it was working better. But the CPU is getting 27 frames per second. Now, both Windows laptops only got 31 frames per second with the CPU. So it's only four frames per second on the CPU side in DaVinci at least. And as you can see here, 4K, it's going to handle no problem CPU and GPU. That one's in the middle. And then you can see there with the Iris Plus graphics, you know, you're not going to use this thing for 8K, but you can see there, you know, 21 frames per second with the GPU and still that 27 with the CPU. So stick to 4K if you're using Resolve. There's some more Resolve benchmarks as well. Okay, when it comes to 8K footage, none of these laptops are going to handle red raw 8K footage. It's not going to happen, even the 15 inch bangers. Now, this is mostly a CPU test. So adding the eGPU doesn't really do that much difference. It does in rendering, I'll show you later. But it only dropped just over 400 frames playing the 8K clip. The other Intel powered 15 inch laptops were dropping over 300 frames. So it's not that bad. It's not like double. And yeah, the Ryzen system on the G14, it's really good for 8K, Red Raw. It still drop frames, but it's much less than the other laptops. Now, what do you do in that situation? Of course, you export the ProRes or DNX or Cineform or whatever. And if we have a look here, you can see the long bars. Of course, that's the MacBook Pro 13 without the GPU. But once you add the GPU, the bars get really small. 
So we'll work from the top. Aero 15 in Premiere Pro, which is PP is Premiere Pro, a minute 15. MacBook Pro 16 in Premiere Pro, two minutes 11. MacBook Pro 16 in Final Cut, a minute and eight seconds. Now MacBook Pro 13 in Premiere Pro, five minutes and 42. You can see there that's quite a lot longer than the 15 inch laptops. And then if we add an eGPU to the MacBook Pro in Premiere Pro, oh, that's a mouthful. It's three minutes and 36. So a bit faster, but still, it's lacking the cores because this is mainly a CPU test. It's, you know, it's got four cores versus eight. Then we go to the next one, MacBook Pro 13 Final Cut Pro. Have a look at that. Seven minutes and 45. Wow, that's a really long time. But add the GPU and woof, two minutes and 24. That's a big jump there. Now that's getting competitive with the 15 inches. It's really not that much slower than the 15 inch laptops now. And at the bottom there, the G14, yeah, it's killing it there with one minute and eight seconds. The moral of the story here with 8K Red Raw is without a GPU, it's going to be over double the amount of time. You would expect that. Add the GPU and yeah, it gets a lot faster and very manageable. Now, I didn't put DaVinci Resolve here because I can't output to 8K because I only have the free version. But I did output to 4K ProRes and it didn't take that much more than a minute. Of course, that was output into 4K, not 8K. Now let's go to 6K HEVC to 4K HEVC. And as you can see here, the long bars are obviously without the eGPU. But have a look at the bars once you add the eGPU. Very similar to the 15 inch laptops, isn't it? And it actually again smokes the Ryzen. This is because the Ryzen doesn't have Intel HD. Now have a look at the bottom at DaVinci Resolve there, the gray bars. With eGPU or even without eGPU. What? That is just nuts. It keeps up with the 15 inch laptops there, even without an eGPU. And look at the MacBook Pro FCP Final Cut with the eGPU there, 155. Wow. And you get that same performance in Premiere Pro 157. So obviously once you add an eGPU, they all perform the same, DaVinci, Final Cut or Premiere. But it is quite amazing that the 13 inch in DaVinci Resolve without an eGPU is keeping up with the 15 inch laptops here. Now I do expect if I used DaVinci Resolve on those 15 inch laptops, there would be a difference. But you know, you choose the right tool, you get the right job done. Now this here is my famous sample project, which is a five and a half minute sort of project. Output it to H.264. Hardware encoding, of course, this is all hardware encoding, if I didn't mention that. But you can see again, obviously the long bars are without the eGPU. I don't know why DaVinci Resolve is so slow with H.264. And I've done that test three times. Actually, I've done every test three times. So I'm going stir crazy, trust me. And the reason what I can see with DaVinci Resolve, why it takes so long without the eGPU is every time it's hitting the compound clip or the animated images, it really slows down to a crawl. And that's where it's sort of getting held up there. Because this is the same project I exported from Premiere Pro. I exported an XML. So it uses the exact same assets. I did have to go in and tweak a few things like reanimate the photos and add some color grading, but they are literally the same project in three different video editors. Now again, add the eGPU, you can see the bars go right down in Premiere Pro, but Final Cut Pro, no. You did get a performance boost, but you can see that purple bar, it's still pretty high and add the eGPU to DR, which is DaVinci Resolve, yeah, the times come right down. So you can see how competitive it is once you add the eGPU with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, when it comes to rendering, you're going to have to account for more than double the amount of time if you're just using the Iris graphics. But the times are still manageable because, you know, that project used to take 50 minutes in a MacBook Pro, then it went down to 28, and now it's, you know, in the teens. So not with DaVinci, but yeah. You get what I mean. So now that same project exported out to HEVC now, and you can see the long bars in Premiere Pro and the long bars in DaVinci when it comes to HEVC exporting. But have a look at Final Cut Pro. eGPU and without the eGPU, that's the one in the red, it still gets great performance exporting. But the biggest lift is Premiere Pro. Once you add that eGPU, it goes down to three minutes and seven seconds. So that's competitive with the 15 inch laptops there. Both Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve with the eGPU, a little bit slower there, but it's still, even though the bars are a little bit longer, it's not as bad as without the eGPU. You can see how long those lines are without the eGPU in Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. But Final Cut for the win here, look at that. Doesn't really matter, eGPU or not. 
So when it comes to this laptop being your content creation machine, can it replace your 15 incher? Well, it can. No problems playing back HEVC 4K, H.264 4K, and even ProRes. I tested ProRes as well. No issue. ProRes should always not be a problem playing it. And both H.264 and 265 with color grading as well. If you want to go to higher resolutions than 4K, I wouldn't recommend the 13 inch unless you have an eGPU. And although you can cut the videos in the video editor no problem at 4K, the render times, they're not as good as the 15 inches. And really in the timeline, the scrubbing's still good on this 13 inch MacBook Pro in any of the video editors. In fact, as good as and sometimes superior to some of the 15 inch Windows laptops due to whatever optimizations, probably metal. The render times are where you're gonna notice the difference the most. But the biggest deal to me is the display size. Yeah, when you use a 16 inch display and you go to a 13 inch, it's really noticeable. I could definitely use this as a video editor. And if you're just doing stuff from your phone or your normal consumer camera, you know, just put it in Final Cut, leave rendering in the background on, and your export times will be a few minutes from a 10 minute video because it will always be rendering in the background when you're not doing stuff, of course. So it's a great little machine. I can't wait to compare it to the Surface later on. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.